me a child no i cannot even care for for myself and you know i i i had these worries and then it kind of started to get more about you know um how do people love people Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. Charlotte Wessels, thank you so much uh, for coming back on the show. I really appreciate it. Um, last time we spoke was a, a, a very open and honest conversation that resonated with a lot of people. I still get a lot of great feedback on that interview. Uh, Till this day, I think the last comment was this morning uh, on that video. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much. Um, it's a, it continues to be a crazy roller coaster. And you know, before you truly kick off your first new single, you say, "Here I go again." Uh, not yep. on your own. We'll come back to that in just a second. But uh, you're back. Uh, you've never really been away in the last you know 24 months. Um, still feeling good about that crazy time. Uh, it's definitely a wild ride, like, um, but uh, but I'm happy that I'm on it. Yeah. So here I go again. So better judgment. History. A quick uh, um, question there that I wanted to ask you. Something uh, a little bit different, maybe. But I noticed, uh, which is unusual uh, in most cases when people send PR stuff to us, that. Um, at the top of every PR message that we get from uh, your label, it actually has your home studio's logo on it, not Shadow of the Wessels. Is, is there a special like like partnership with Napalm that you're working on? Is the studio itself not just for you, um, but something you want to promote more? I think it started out as me just wanting, like I wanted a logo and it felt weird to be like Shadow of the Wessels because I mean, it's just my name, you know, if, it didn't feel really creative. And this space, like this space is so transformative and it got me through like a lot. And it, you know, I, I made all of those songs there. And now you can see that it's a big mess here because today it doubled as a rehearsal space as well. Um, so I felt like if there's going to be a logo on top of the PR stuff and it is for, you know, it was from Six Feet Under Volume Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it should be like the, the the Six Feet Under Studio logo that is on top of there because um, people who know that will will know that it's me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And and we see in that logo, but also all the the wonderful artwork that has been created for your material. Um, work of Martin Donders. Um, yeah. So your artwork for me, um, and I don't know if this is something that you either agree with or like or what have you, but it snaps me back to being a kid going to the Netherlands, which for me meant going to the Efteling. Back when uh, Within Temptation got really popular in the Netherlands. I think yeah. that there was like this journalist that called it Efteling Metal. Really? And they meant it as a diss, I feel. It's like a super but compliment. Was, who doesn't love the Efteling? You know? Exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's like, with my music, there's always this, this more, it's always quite grounded into the here and now as well. So mm -hmm. if people would say like, I only get like fairy tale vibes from it. I think I will be doing something wrong. But yeah. you know, getting slight Efteling vibes is, is cool with me. Yeah, for sure. Here I go again, so better judgment. Talk about storytelling and, and so on. Um, when we spoke last time, you were like, you know, I have this one song, Afkikin, that I have an idea for a video. I hope I can pull it off. Did it live up to your wildest expectations or did it even go beyond that? Because that, that turned out very special and not in the least, given the worldwide response to this video, 
a song fully sung in Dutch, which on paper you'd be like, maybe a more difficult song for people to relate to. I think it is a difficult song for people to relate to. I think it definitely would have gotten more traction if it was uh, maybe an English song. However, like there is, you know, it's always when you do this for a living, you have certain things where you feel like um, I've got to do this as like more of a marketing move, which, which you can see from my face is not necessarily the thing I like to do most. And then there's the things that you really want to do because you really want to do it because mm -hmm. you need to do it because, you know, there's a story that you want to tell or you know, it's been stuck in your brain and you can't get it out. And uh, this this video for um, uh, for Afkicken was definitely one of those where I was like, I want to make this this crazy story where it shows like a completely different story to the song's protagonist than you would initially expect if you if you hear the lyrics and understand the lyrics. Um, so uh, I I am I am really happy with how it turned out. I I love uh, I love the monster which uh, we call Frank. His name is Frank. Um, uh, he's shy. He's 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 adorable. Uh, and uh, I love the choreography and I love the styling, which was, you know, very inspired by uh, Suspirio, one of my favorite movies. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it was a completely new challenge. It definitely was the biggest production that I've done so far, uh, the most challenging productions in, in many ways as well that I've done so far. Um, but I, I am I am proud of how it turned out. Like, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, I can't, yeah. So now, now I want to make a full horror movie, you understand, you know? <laughs> of course, of course. I mean, there's a couple <laughs> of things there. First of all, every person that knows you personally with the name Frank is going to worry about that after this interview about, okay, what did I ever do no, to it's Charlotte a, it's to become a monster? No, it's a name. Uh, no, I, I, if, if they know me, they will know that it can only ever be a compliment. <laughs> This is the most serious question that I have for you in this whole uh, interview. And the fact that you did have to shave your head uh, for uh, that uh, that interview, um, is that just basically a ploy for all the haters out there to kind of worry about, do I talk about her nose ring or do I talk about the lack <laughs> of hair? Uh, I made it complicated for them, right? Exactly, well played, well played. Thank you, thank you. I honestly, like I, I've been curious about doing that and i it's kind of a big move because you don't know like what will my face look like um you're never quite sure if you can pull it off until you try it um but i i think for me it was really the fact that we were working on this script and we were working on like the plot and we were thinking about the the end scene that is kind of woven throughout the video where where I'm in the middle of this clearing, basically getting ready to be, uh, you know, sacrificed to the monsters. Spoilers, the everybody. Yeah. yeah, casual Tuesday activities. But um, and uh, and and we were just thinking about how how can we make me look as basically as miserable as possible. I was, and I, and I was like, you know, I could shave my hair, you know, some kind mm -hmm. of punishment, you know? Uh, and everyone kind of laughed it off, like, mm -hmm. yeah, you're not serious. I was wearing hair extensions at the time, you know? So it right. was like, no. Um, but yeah, it was one of those things that got stuck in my brain. And I've been thinking about it for like, because we'd been planning this video for months and I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't. I wasn't sure that I was going to go through with it until like two days before the video shoot. And I, I, I called them, uh, the, the makeup artist and I was like, hey, you know, do you have clippers? Because, you know, I want to do this. And she was like, if I'm going to do this, I want you to be very clear about the fact that you want to do this because people will come after me. And um, so thanks, yeah. Michelle. <laughs> I'm so happy with it. It just felt like it was a, a good reason to do it. And of course, 
all of the all of the people getting annoyed by it is a nice plus. Exactly. <laughs> now we're you know, I was joking a little earlier and you know you're like, oh people are laughing and stuff like that, but there is a very a serious um undertone in that transformation uh that very few people definitely not a single male and 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 a lot of females might not realize as well i have a good friend who is um let's say a heavy metal model and mm -hmm. she shaved her head a couple of years ago and she tells me all the time that so many people just ask her bluntly like how long have you been sick um because apparently the only reason that you know a, a woman cannot have long hair is because there is to your point something yeah. really wrong have you experienced that side of it as well even forget the trolls online yeah honestly not so much i've had some people who were like kind of cautious to ask because there's always yeah. the possibility of someone right. being and i i appreciate that kind of um yeah, I, I appreciate that. Uh, my mom had to shave her hair once and not for the fun reasons. So it's right. it I, I I I completely understand that. So here I go again with arms wide open and I'm hoping The first song that was released is Against All uh, Against All Odds, which is a more um you know intimate song or or, or quieter song. Um compared to what really most of the album stands for. But was the, the the message that comes out in that song, was that just a really important, like kind of like set the stage? I'm going you? to be totally honest with you. The reason why this is the first single is because, um, so I am I'm really excited about getting back on that stage. Um, and when, like I wrote the song kind of from this relationship kind of perspective like you know uh, going back into something even though you're not sure you know or maybe you should know better but i was i was planning this gig which is like the same gig where i played my last show like pre-pandemic mm -hmm. uh, pre-band split and so i was really feeling the song you know in a in a different kind of way as well um and what I basically wanted to do was um, kind of capture that feeling by doing like a really small video for that on that stage. And again, that was something that I just I just really wanted to do that with Timo, who did the guitars on the mm -hmm. song, really made it, you know, uh, shine a bit brighter, if you ask me, or a lot. Um, and uh, uh, I wanted to do that there also to get people hyped for the show, you know? Mm -hmm. So I uh, I decided to make that video before I even decided that this album was gonna be an album. Okay. Um, and then when I did decide that I was going to do a volume two and that it was going to be released before the show and that it was going to be a double release show, I was like, oh, that means that I should really get going. And then that was the one that I had, okay. uh, and that I was very eager and that I didn't want to wait with releasing because, you know, I had made it and I wanted to put it out there. And of course, then it was like, is it representative as a first single of this upcoming album? And it was like, no, not really, but who cares? I'll do more singles, you know? <laughs> And then more singles followed, well, at least, you know, we had Human to Ruin uh, that, that followed, which um, uh, for a lot, maybe more of a statement even, especially when you look at the album as a whole. And um, a, let's be honest, a lot of people very excited that we got, you know, a symphonic metal track uh, with Charlotte. Um, so, you know, as a, it, was almost, it almost felt like a statement of like, don't worry guys, I got you covered. Um, I want to dig into some of the stuff there, though, because um, the, the the themes of that song tend to be a little bleaker, um, depending on who the I person is in this in this story. But um, you know, we get like a lot of themes of 
you know, almost self-loathing uh, at times uh, to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, you've been working on songs every month. Um, you've been getting a lot of positive feedback from a lot of different angles on the first collection of songs already. Um, what, with what mindset does does Human to Ruin, you know, come to be? Because you you come across as in a lot happier space than when I talked to you last year. I think I am, uh, especially you know the things that we talked about by now. Hmm. Yeah. 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 <sighs> Um, no, I am. Uh, but that song is. I think it was. I think I was talking about. I was thinking about when I got the idea for the song. I was. I was. I was thinking about. And this is weird, and it's 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 going to sound super stereotypical. But I'm a 35 year old woman, and I was like, will I ever have kids? And then I was like. Me, a child? No, I cannot even care for for myself. And you know, I, I, I had these worries, and then it kind of started to get more about you know, um, how do people love people? How do you not mess people up? And that's kind of where the idea for the song started. And I could have done the thing where I was like. But of course you'll be okay in the end, or <laughs> no, but everybody messes up and it will still be fine. But I thought that maybe it would be more powerful for this song to just stick with that feeling. Because, and this is often my feeling with these kind of emotions that uh, you cannot just put them away. Like at one point you have to say them out loud. And then if you mm -hmm. say them out loud, you can also hear how silly some of them are. Daring to say out loud, whether that's in a metaphor or just saying something out loud and then yeah. kind of dissecting that and dealing with that is, is that, has that been the biggest lesson for you in these last two years? I don't know what the biggest message has been. I, I do try to sit, my, sit with my feelings a little bit more and allowing myself to feel the things, you know, also the unpleasant things, the things that you're not necessarily proud of, and then also speaking about those things. Uh, I do try to do that more. It's not easy, um, but it. Uh, I found that it's better than um, letting it kind of fester inside. Yeah. For sure. yeah. <laughs> You talked already about the show coming up, and it's gonna be a big deal, um, clearly. And I know that you're extremely excited about this. Um, you mentioned you have Timo on board. You don't just have Timo on board. Um, we're starting to see more than a few familiar faces. Um, people are, regardless, when that group of people comes together, are going to be looking at that and comparing that. Um, with other stuff that's currently also going on. Um, is that is that a conversation you guys are proactively having and kind of preparing yourself for? Because you just know that even with the best of intentions, everybody's gonna do that. I think, I think, like, if we were both, like, coming out with our first thing now, then maybe it would be more like that, but I feel like uh, I'm going into this first gig with two albums under my belt, which are so different. Mm -hmm. I feel like people might, I think it's apples and pears, even though, you know, the same people will be uh, delivering that on the stage. Um, and I also feel, and this is maybe even more important to me, like, even if they do, you know, you're not going to prevent that. If I, And I also feel like if I would be doing that with different people, that there will probably also be comparisons. And I had a lot of, um, 
Well, I'm not going to say I had hesitations at first, but I, it, for me, it was like we came out of a, we came out of this band together, and it was a band, mm -hmm. so it was very different. Uh, I didn't ask them straight away, like, hey, you know, you guys want to join me on stage? Because I was like, I'm, I'm doing these songs now, and we come from this band situation, and I, um, I didn't know if they would be interested to, you know. Yeah. just play my songs and uh but you know we we've been uh we've been hanging out a bit and i um and we we talked about it and i i am just very i'm just very honored in a way and happy that they they want to to join me in this toxic and also it would like for me it would feel so weird when i when i am so excited to perform with them and when they're so excited to perform with me to go asking people to ask go and ask other musicians because of what people might think or because of what people might say because of what people on the internet might think that there is like um like I, I, I'm not interested in comparisons. Like I think that would be, I'm not, I'm not searching for you know what is happening there. So yeah, I'm trying to just again, I'm I'm just trying to feel what I feel and and yeah, act yeah. according to that uh, because if I if I would be doing the thing that. Um, the internet wants or expects, you know. Um, you'd be looking at a different woman, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no. And it'll be, uh, let's be honest, it'll be nice for you as well when you're on that stage and you turn to the side that you'll see a familiar face that, that you know be, you can just, yeah, you know, that trust. would be fantastic. I, I, I can't wait. And also, just um, like yesterday and today, we were rehearsing here, and it's just, it, it. It really, it really feels like home just to perform with them again. It's uh, no, no, no. it's very lovely, and uh, I know we're talking about them now, but we also got Sophia, the new face on. Key. Of course, of course, of Phenomenal. course, of course. And uh, yes. she she fits right into the group. It must be weird for her because you know we got all our inside jokes and things and, and yeah. you know memories and uh, but she's she's picking up so fast. <laughs> Right now, we can really look forward to uh, to the concert, um, which I'm sure will be a fantastic experience. And then um, I obviously am keeping my fingers crossed that that big show will be soon followed with more announcements of other things that are brewing uh, that you can share um, uh, in the in the near future. Uh, Charlotte, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, Thank you for being open and genuine uh, and, uh, you know, um, having a big smile on your face uh, while talking, which is always cool to see. Um, I wish you all the best with the, re let's call it worldwide release, because your patrons have already heard some of the stuff, obviously, but uh, the full release of, uh, of your new album. And then, yeah, looking forward to volume three, four, five and six uh, that I'm sure will come out in 2023. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was uh, lovely chatting with you again and uh, have a great day over there. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.